In this video I want to show you 9 foods that lower inflammation based on scientific research. Nowadays it's easy to get confused to what foods are actually healthy. And food advertisements are using words like superfoods and heart healthy all the time. Even though nobody really knows what makes a food becoming a superfood. Anyways, what makes food healthy for you depends a little bit on your general diet, your health status and how well you tolerate certain foods. But having said this, there are indeed some foods that have been shown to be really good for the average person's health by reducing inflammation. And science shows us that inflammation is at the root of all modern diseases. So I went through a bunch of scientific papers that looked at different foods and will present a top list of anti-inflammatory foods here in this video. The first on our list of anti-inflammatory foods are berries. Berries are packed with polyphenols, which have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. As an example, a study found that when overweight people consumed a high carb and high fat meal, it increased their inflammation levels. But this was attenuated when a strawberry smoothie was consumed right after the meal, but not for the placebo drink. Another study also showed that consuming blueberries daily increased anti-inflammatory molecules, but at the same time increased the number of natural killer cells, which are the first line of defense against viruses and also against cancer cells. So berries reduce inflammation without compromising the efficiency of the immune system. More exotic berries like acai berries are often advertised as superfood. And yes, like other berries, studies show that they are anti-inflammatory. And I could not tell you to buy this or that product I've linked in the description. But honestly, there is no evidence that acai berries are any superior to local berries. So just go and get some fresh berries at your local farmer's market or even frozen ones from the grocery store are fine as well. Ok, jumping from sweet to fatty. Fish, especially fatty fish, is also anti-inflammatory. I've made a video on how omega-3 reduces inflammation if you want to have a more detailed version about it. But in short, omega-3 fatty acids mainly lead to the production of anti-inflammatory molecules. The problem is that nowadays we have a pretty messed up omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratio, which leads to low-grade chronic inflammation. However, studies show that the consumption of fish or fish oil supplements reduces inflammation. My recommendation would be to include some fatty fish a couple times a week into your diet. And if you don't like fish, just get some high quality fish oil or cod liver oil. It is actually not so delicious, but it helps. Switching gears again, cruciferous vegetables have also been studied for their anti-inflammatory properties. And broccoli and broccoli sprouts are top candidates here. A study found that when patients with type 2 diabetes consume 5 or 10 grams of broccoli sprouts daily, it reduced their inflammation levels significantly compared to the control. The positive effect most likely comes from the compound sulforaphane, which is found in high concentrations in cruciferous vegetables. Studies found that sulforaphane activates antioxidant pathways such as the NRF2 pathway and inhibits inflammatory pathways like NF-kappa B. By the way, a recent study found that cooking broccoli reduces the bioavailability of sulforaphane. But if cooked broccoli was consumed with mustard, it increased the bioavailability fourfold. Which is great news for me personally, since I'm German and I love my mustard. I really love it. Okay, most millennials have already figured out the next anti-inflammatory food. The avocado. People were divided into two groups and consumed a burger with or without 68 grams of avocado. And the people who consumed the avocado showed lower levels of inflammation after the meal. Next on our list is olive oil, which is praised for many health benefits, including the longevity of people on Greek islands. And I was almost surprised to find out that most claims are indeed true. Let's look at this study for instance, that divided people into three diet groups. A Mediterranean diet supplemented with 50 ml of olive oil daily, a Mediterranean diet with extra 30 grams of nuts daily, or a low fat diet. Both Mediterranean diets were highly efficient in terms of reducing inflammation compared to the low fat diet. And the olive oil group even outed the nuts group by a little bit. Fermented food cannot be missing on our anti-inflammatory food list. Fermented food is rich in important vitamins produced by the microbes like vitamin B12 or vitamin K2. But studies also show that probiotic bacteria can have anti-inflammatory effects themselves. 
Patients with rheumatoid arthritis were randomly assigned to consume either a probiotic supplement or a placebo, and after 8 weeks, all inflammatory proteins went down for the probiotic group, and the anti-inflammatory protein, interleukin-10, went up. Other studies confirm these results and show for instance that probiotic bifidio bacteria reduce inflammation in conditions like inflammatory bowel diseases, chronic fatigue syndrome and psoriasis. Ok, dark chocolate is not only delicious but also potentially anti-inflammatory. Cacao is packed with a group of antioxidants called flavonoids, which are responsible for chocolate's health benefits. The power of cacao in reducing inflammation is still under debate, with some studies showing a clear benefit, while others only showing minor or no effects. The effect seemingly depends on our microbiome, as we don't absorb much of the cacao flavor nodes, and they end up in the gut, where they are metabolized by our microbiome. Studies show that a high cacao intake increases the number of beneficial microbes, and reduces potentially harmful ones, and thereby reducing inflammation. Animal studies also show that coconut oil might have some anti-inflammatory properties. Coconut oil is rich in medium-chain triglycerides, or short MCTs, and a recent study supplemented the diet of rats with either MCT oil or corn oil. And after a week, the scientists injected the rats with an endotoxin that causes a severe immune response. This endotoxin is usually found on the cell wall of microbes that live in our gut, and during conditions like leaky gut, it is exposed to our immune system where it induces a strong inflammatory response. When the scientists injected the endotoxin directly into the blood of the rats, it caused such a severe immune response that all animals that previously consumed the diet supplemented with corn oil died within 24 hours but the mortality was actually prevented by the MCT oil in a dose-dependent manner. The beer in the coconut and drink it all up, you put the beer in the coconut and throw the can away. Alright, these are the 9 anti-inflammatory foods. Again, if you can't tolerate these foods I've mentioned here today, they won't be any good for you. But scientific research showed us that for the average person, these foods reduce inflammation. Alright, if this video gets 100 likes, I will make another video about anti-inflammatory spices and how you could incorporate them into your diet, and a video about anti-inflammatory drinks and whether beverage like green tea or red wine can really live up to the hype. Click on this video if you want to learn how to increase your brain power naturally, and YouTube thinks that you like this video. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing if you're interested in a coming video that talks about CBD oil. See you next time.